name is Kelechi, Kelechi Amadiobi. I'm a photographer. I've always been interested in the arts, visual arts. I mean, as a child, I couldn't stop drawing, you see. In fact, I was obsessed, you know, with making drawings. Um, you know, the usual Spider-Man, Incredible Hulk, I was addicted to those things. I learned from a very early age that you could do research on whatever you're interested in and excel. So I started reading books on drawing and painting and art history from a very young age. The question now is, why did you go to study law? Well, I come from a family of lawyers. My father was a high court judge, and you know how they are. As a result, I've got four lawyers in my house and two medical doctors. Those are the only two recognized professions in my house. Law became the natural choice. So when I got into University University of Nigeria, Enugu campus, that was when I realized that, wow, all those artists I used to read about, people were actually living like that. But sometime in my year three, I decided that I was going to finish with my law, finish with it, get a degree, get your call to bar. But in my year three, I decided I was going to be a full-time studio artist. So law school brought me to Lagos. And that's usual, you know, Lagos came with a lot of, you know, uh, pomp and pageantry and I, I we couldn't resist. And then the art scene, again, was amazing, almost like New York, you know, by comparison in terms of the experience I was having. You know, there were galleries, there were, you know, museums, there were artists, real artists making a living in Lagos. After law school, I did my youth call up north, you know, I came back to Lagos and settled to become a full-time studio artist. So I started practicing as an artist. At that point, I could only afford a uh, sheet of cardboard paper and uh, some graphite, some pencil, you know? And uh, I used it, and it worked. You know, you make a drawing, people buy it, then I go and buy watercolor. Then make another drawing, people buy it, then I buy oil paint, you know? And I had, I was lucky, I had an aunt in Suilere who would accommodate unemployed, you know, confused lawyers who don't want to practice. <laughs> I had my first art exhibition in her sitting room. You know, it was a charity exhibition. It was after that exhibition that people realized that I had something to do. Because we raised about two million naira then, and it was something. After that exhibition, somebody now sponsored a real exhibition for me at the Russian Cultural Center. So I became this successful painter, and I had more clients than I could make paintings for. But I was feeling a bit odd. I, I, I thought that, okay, the, I was having fun just painting, but when the demand became unbearable, I started saying, but is this just a business? Am I expressing myself or whatever? You know, if I wanted to increase my income, does it mean I needed to make more paintings? Or... So I said, well, maybe I'll try my hands on photography as something on the side, you know? And I thought photography would not be contaminated by commercial concerns. I, so, but before then I had been playing with the camera. Then I was using the camera as a means of getting photographic reference for my paintings. You know, so I, I, I used to make all these generic paintings and paint to Jolegba bus stop, Yaba bus stop. And um, like I read in the books, they said, you know, take your sketch pad, go there, feel it, draw it, you know. So I went to Jolegba with my sketch pad. But it was crazy. People are not used to seeing artists on the streets, you know. So there I was sitting on a bench trying to get my sketch on. There would be a mini crowd at my back. Everybody making comments about it, it's crazy. <laughs> so I knew I had to use a camera, capture it, then go back to the studio, you know, to play with, you know, the material. So that was how my photography started. You know what ended up happening? The photographs I was making as reference materials for my shoes started looking more interesting than the painting. I said, wow, hmm, this is looking like a finished work already. And uh, I started making friends with other photographers who would hang out with me. Because then I started printing the stuff. I used to shoot with black and white film then. Then I'll go to somebody's dark room and learn how to print. And then we used to put the thing in chemicals. It was fun, you know. I just fell in love with photography. Immediately I saw I could manipulate the picture after taking it in the dark room. You know, you could make some places lighter, darker. You could even make somebody's neck longer. You know, it's, it was interesting, you know. And um, so I now had a collection 
together with my painting of just reference material. So I found myself exhibited in Mali alongside 12 top Nigerian photographers. Um, even though I wasn't like a professional photographer. And there I was in Mali, some other curators came and I got invited to Milan to have an exhibition of the same collection. It was a huge exposure because I now saw that there were so many photographers doing fine art photography. Just like I was doing fine art painting. I said, wow, this is nice. Yet nobody knew who we were in Nigeria. Like, if you came and you said you were a photographer, they'd be thinking about something Arab a copy. You know? So I said, okay, I'm going to settle down, instead of all this flying up and down the whole world, and set up a real photography business. And, um, and make people understand that this profession is a real profession. You know, let's run it like a real business and use all these skills, you know, to solve people's photographic problems. And um, that was how I established my studio, Kelechi Amadiobi Studios. I always loved the fashion photographs I used to see in um, Vogue, Elle, and all those other magazines. I always loved that. But there was no fashion magazine in Nigeria. So I was shooting models just you know, I'll call somebody and say, oh, you look like a model, come, let's do a shoot. So I had a portfolio, a fashion photography portfolio with absolutely no client. It was crazy, you know? So when True Love magazine came from South Africa, they were looking for photographers. They approached T.Y. Bell and T.Y. said, oh, Kenichi likes to shoot fashion, go to him. So they called me and I showed them my portfolio and they were impressed. And, uh, and they said, oh, you know, you can do a, an edit a fashion editorial for us. I said, yes, of course. And that was how I started shooting fashion editorial for the first time for a magazine. I've always believed that art is a very powerful medium for social engineering. You know, the artists that determine what the trends are, you know, and all that. So, so that gave me an opportunity. It was nice. You know, we, and then other magazines came and Genevieve started employing other photographers and it became the norm. Fashion editorial photography lives inside a fashion magazine. That's where it lives. You know, if there is no fashion magazine, then there's nowhere to show. It's dead. It's just pictures in your computer. And there was this young chap who used to work for Genevieve then, um, Dimeji Alara. And one day he called me with a foreign number. I said, what? Where are you? He said, I'm in South Africa. I'm working for L magazine now. I said, you don't mean it. Oh, he said, yeah. I said, look, learn everything you about that thing. Come back, Nigerians need that expertise. We discovered something, that it was possible for us to do a very creative, world-class fashion editorial, one every week. So we had four fashion editorials shot in a month. I said, wow. So that's how they do it at Vogue, you know, because they have four fashion editorials. It's a lot of work, but you can absorb this, you know? So we were thinking about it, and then the magazines went down. So there I was, you know, a fashion photographer with no fashion magazine, and there was a fashion stylist with no fashion magazine. So we said, you know what? I think we should start our own magazine. I mean, that's the only solution, so people can see our work. The major, he does not waste time. He says, okay, good. We're going to start next tomorrow for the shoot. I said, what shoot? Say for the magazine. <laughs> and that was how we started shooting. We didn't even know the name of the magazine. We just started. In terms of challenging ourselves and being able to show Africa the way we imagine, the way we think it should be shown, we need to provide a platform you know, for creatives to show what they, what they have. And provide a platform for us to challenge the negative notion about Africa. Because I keep saying, if you come into a room and the room is dark, do you sit down and start complaining, binding and casting on darkness? Go away. I hate this darkness. What is this? You know, and it, as nonsensical as that sounds, that is what happens here. You know, you see people complaining, say, oh, you know, on CNN is only hungry people, it's only Boko Haram, it's death, the Niger Delta kidnapping, it's only in the show of Africa. And I say, if you're in that dark room, why don't you light a candle? Or get a car. So get a car, up a generator. <laughs> and the darkness will go away. So don't complain about the negative image. Show them the positive one. And it naturally neutralizes that.